Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we bless the wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless the wonderful name of Jesus. Praise be to God. I just thank God for another opportunity to come before you in this new year. January 1st, 2023, we should be praising God. And I hope you praise God that he allowed you to, to have another day in him. Another year has gone by and we rejoice in him today. I just thank God for each and every one of you who have been part of this broadcast since the onset and have joined us today for the first time. I give glory and honor to God for he is truly the head of my life. I rejoice in him today. I'm truly excited about the word that he has for you today. So with that said, uh, when you um, share this broadcast with your friends and family, grab your word. Amen. This broadcast is called the spoken word because God speaks to us through his word. He gives me scripture for you to study, to share with your friends and family for your meditation time. So grab your Bible, get a pen and paper. Write down the scriptures that I give you today so you can study them through the week. Uh, this broadcast is to help you. It's our mission to make the word of God clear to you, to help you recognize who God is in your life, to help teach you sound doctrine, to encourage you, to motivate you, to equip you so you can live victoriously in Christ. Amen. And I'm excited about the call of God that he has placed on my life many, many, many years ago. Um, I have uh, been saved for over ooh, 30 something years, maybe even 40 years. I've been serving in different capacities in the ministry for many years. My, my name may not be on billboards. My name may not be broadcast by people. This broadcast may not be passed on, but I'm still going to do what God has called me to do, even if it just reaches one person, amen, looking at live da uh, in the dashboard, and you will see information concerning giving to this ministry. If God has placed on your heart to give, uh, maybe he wants you to tie to this ministry. Maybe he just wants you to sow into this ministry. Whatever he uh, gives you to do or put places on your heart to do, do it, amen. Uh, you can give through Givelify, that's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y.com. You'll come up with Shield of Faith Ministries with Pastor Sandra Glover Carter. You can click on the link and it should take you directly there. Our address uh, of the church is 17356 Northland Park Court in the city of Southfield, Michigan. And if you know me personally, you can inbox me and I give you my phone number and you can give through uh, Zelle. So with that said, Father God, we just thank you, O oh God, for this opportunity to once again to come before you, O oh God, to give you glory, to give you honor, just to worship and praise your name, for you are a God, hallelujah, that deserves all our praise. We just thank you, O oh God, for you are God Almighty. There's nobody greater than you. There's nobody that can do what you do, O oh God, and we Surrender this broadcast to you, O oh God, and ask, O oh God, that you move mightily through the power of the Holy Spirit. We ask, O oh God, that you speak through me to the people and open up their ears to hear the, the word of God, the truth about your word, so it will spark and ignite them to want to make changes to examine their lives, O oh God. Let me give the truth, O oh God, and not what I think, but what the word of God says, your promises. I ask, O oh God, as I surrender all to you to anoint these lips of clay, O oh God, so I can be led by the Holy Spirit in all truth about what you have for your people today. We thank you, O oh God, for moving on this broadcast. And we even thank you in advance that someone hears this broadcast and wants to accept you as Lord and Savior, O oh God. We bless you today. We glorify you and we thank you, O oh God, for the word. In Jesus' name, amen. I am truly excited today, hallelujah, for the word. The, uh, the title of the broadcast today uh, for the spoken word is, It's a Time for Self-Reflection, amen. 2023 is a time of self-reflection. I want to say happy, happy new year to each and every one of you. And I declare blessings over your life 
and want you to have a blessed year. Amen. This is the time, this season, this is a time where many people consider crossing over into the uh, new year is a time of a new season. When they, when they leave 2022 and now they're in 2023, they think of it as a new time, a new time for self-reflection. You reflect on what took place in your past, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And hopefully you're not going back too far. It may maybe a month or two of your reflection, but don't go back to what happened to you 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, because th those things are passed away. Reflect on what just took place just a few days ago and look towards the future, amen? Sometimes you have to push and move faster uh, and then sometimes you have to slow down, rest, and recharge, amen? Some of us were moving on a fast pace, amen? Now is the time for us to slow down, rest, and to listen for God's voice, amen? A time when you restart, make, this is a time where you make new, what they call New Year's resolutions, the plans for your future, amen? And a lot of times when you make New Year's resolutions, amen, and you're doing it out of yourself, amen, you don't stick with those plans. But when you just stop, rest, and listen for the voice of God and allow him to guide your plans, allow him, hallelujah, to lead you where he wants you to go for the year, then he will give you what you need. And you have a lot of times what you need, you are already equipped to achieve what God has for you. He says that I know the plans for you, amen. The plans for us to have victory, to receive his blessings, amen, to be overcomers. That's what God has for you today. Hallelujah. It's time out for being depressed, amen, and sad. This is a new year, a new time, and a new season to restart. Hallelujah. So many people say they're going to exercise. I'm going to exercise and I'm, and I'm going to lose 20 pounds. Yeah, the first... Uh, 30, 60, 90 days, you stick with it. But honey, <laughs> after that 91st day and a holiday comes around and they cook that potato salad in the ribs, immediately you get off of that diet, amen. And you don't get back on until the next year, amen. Hallelujah. I know that it had happened to me at one time, but my attitude, hallelujah, is that I'm going to stick with this because this is what God wants me to be healthy, amen. He's a healer, but we have to do some things in ourselves ourselves with the help of the Holy Spirit to get to, to get to the level of health that God wants us to have. Amen. Hallelujah. Some people said they're going to change their attitude, leave some things alone that they have been doing. Amen. It takes the power of the Holy Ghost to help you do that. It's time for you to examine your heart too. Hallelujah. For you to say, creating me a, a clean heart and a right spirit, like David said. Amen. Some of us were mean and hateful. Many of you argue with your friends and your family, but it's time out. This is a new season. Amen. Maybe you want to reach that that new spiritual plateau, that, that, uh, that spiritual pursuit of getting closer to God to reach that greater, greater zeal for Christ that you've never experienced before. That's my goal. Amen. I want to experience God like never before. Hallelujah. I've had some outstanding experiences with God. He's, I've seen my prayers answered. I've seen miracles performed and he still performs them today, but I want to have even a greater zeal for Christ that when I w wake up in the morning, I'm not just crawling out of bed. I'm leaping out of bed. Amen. That I have a dance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I wake up thanking him for a new day, I may have an ache in my knee, an ache in my back. I may have some pain, but I'm going to rejoice in God. And I want to keep that zeal, not just because it's uh, this day, but throughout the year and the coming years. Hallelujah. You've even said that you're so glad that 2022 is behind you because of what you had to deal with. Amen. Some of it had to deal with heartache and pain, death in the family, the loss of job, not enough money to, to pay your rent, problems with your children. But this is a new year. Amen. Paul gives us some things to, to think about for the new year. When you look in Philippians chapter three, hallelujah. Praise God. Let me calm myself down because I'm really excited this morning. Amen. Because he allowed me to cross over to 2023. Amen. Philippians 3, 13 and 14. He said, brother, I do not count myself to ha have comprehended, but one thing I do forgetting things which are behind and reaching forward 
to these to those things which are ahead. He's reaching forward. He, a, a man 20, 22 is behind us. We can't change anything that took place in 2022. This is 2023. We have to reach forward to those things which are ahead. And you have to press. You have to press your way. Let go of the past. You got It's a press when the enemy is attacking you and, and he wants to keep his foot on your neck. But you got to press. And when you get up, put on that whole armor of God so you're able to have victory over the enemy. See, he's, Paul says, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Forgetting those things which are behind. Forgetting those things which are behind. Are you getting that? What are those things, those stupid decisions that we made that cause us greater pain and suffering? The bad, the hurt, the things that people said against you. We got to leave that behind, the failures. Yes, we try, hallelujah. We messed up and we failed, but you got to get up. You can't stay down. You got to get up and try again. Hallelujah. Try and try again. Hallelujah. You know, when when who, who Ford created the Model T, he wasn't successful the first time, the second time, and the third time. It took several attempts for him to make the car. And for it to run, amen? But he didn't give up. Just think, if he had given up, but we'd still be riding in horses and buggies, amen? You have to let go of the hurt, the sin of your past. If you have committed and asked God to forgive you for your sins, he's faithful and, and just to forgive you of your sins and he cleansed you from all unrighteousness. He doesn't remember them, so stop beating yourself up with them, amen? You need to confess your sin, forget it, and move on, amen? This is a time of self-reflection. It's time for you to move on from the past, amen? And even the disappointments, amen? The things that you wanted, you didn't get. You're disappointed because God didn't answer your prayer. That doesn't mean that he's not going to do it. Maybe it was a time for you to wait. Because he had to do some things to prepare you to receive what he has. Maybe he said, no, wait, because what you're seeking for and what you're looking for is not what God's will for you to have. He's, he's preparing you for greater. And he's preparing you and speaking to you if you only open up your heart and your mind and your ears to listen to God's direction. I know what I'm talking about because there have been times when I've been disappointed about certain things, but it still worked out for my good. All things work out for our good if we just trust and believe God. And as I mentioned on this past year, 2022, uh, I had to let go of what took place in 2020, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, even two years ago. If I want the blessings of God, if I want to be in the will of God, I have to be obedient to the word, which clearly tells us in Isaiah, Isaiah 43, 18, remember not the former things. Remember not the former, former things, the past things. It's clear in the word. He tells us don't remember it, not consider the old. Behold, he said, I am doing what? A new thing. A new thing. This is a new year, a new season, a new time in your life, a time and uh, that you've never experienced before. This moment in time is new. And it says, now it springs forth. For, do you not perceive it? Don't you understand what I'm telling you? Let go of the past. Don't remember the former things because he has is giving you new things, greater things. How, how are you going to grab hold of and receive the new things if you don't let go of the old? You don't have the capacity to receive all that God has for you. Think of it this way. You have your hands full and God wants you to bless you with more. But you hold it on to what you had. I, I, I can't let go of this house because I like this old house. I've been here for, for 30 years. Amen. But God might want, he may want you to have a new house, an updated house. 
a house that he can bless you when you're debt free and you don't have a house payment or he wants to fill your hands with greater but if you're holding on to the past your hands is in gripping on to that old stuff amen and he can't put into your hands the new things but once you let go of the past the old things once you let go your hands are open to receive greater from god hallelujah that is the illumination, the revelation that God gave me this morning for me. And I'm sharing it with you because it's for you too. Amen. Hallelujah. You got to let go to receive greater from God. Amen. Let go. Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to let go of that old job that's, that you, you hate so much so God can bless you and open up a door for you to step in to receive your new job. Tithing is another example, holding on to that little bit of money that you receive because you're so concerned about meeting a need, amen. I got to pay my light bill. I have to pay my phone bill. I don't have enough to eat. But when you give to God, hallelujah, hallelujah, he gives it back to you and even greater. When you read Malachi 30 and 10, I read it in the Common English Bible. Listen to what this says. He says, bring the whole tenth part to the storage house so there may be food in my house. And this is what the word of God says. Please test me in this, says the Lord of heavenly forces. He said, please test me. Just give one tenth. One tenth of what I give you. Test me. He's, he's giving you a challenge. Test me. See whether I do not open all the windows of the heavens. Amen. Not just one door, not just one window, but all the windows. You know the vastness of God. Hallelujah. I do not open. I do not open all the windows of the heavens for you and empty out a blessing until there is enough for you to receive. Amen. Hallelujah. King James Version says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and put me to the proof now herewith, said the Lord of hosts. If I will not open to you, open to you if you tithe, open to you when you give, open to you the windows of heaven and pour out pour out, pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Oh, Jesus. Think about your apartment, your surroundings, the four walls. Every corner of the home is blessed. Everything, God has filled you with so many blessings. It's just overtaking you. There is not enough room for you to receive anymore. That's because you have let go and allow God to move in your life. Let go of the past, holding on to the stuff, being stingy, amen? It is my desire, hallelujah, as I reflect on 24, uh, 2023, amen, to please God, to live holy before God, to live in obedience, but to be thankful, hallelujah, for all that he's done and what he's doing, to have faith and fellowship with God, even greater than what was behind me, amen? My desire is to serve the Lord, how with gladness to lead others to Christ, to share the gospel, not just ask, do you go to church, but hallelujah, have you accepted the Lord and Savior in your life? My desire is to know Christ more intimately, to experience the Lord in a greater measure, meaning to get to know Christ intimately, more intimately as a person, as well as to know his ways, amen? And the only way you can do that is to, to spend time with him, amen? Just like you meet somebody for the first time, you don't know nothing about them, amen? But it's spending time with them, in communication with them, talking, walking, sharing intimate moments with them as far as is being in their presence, amen, hallelujah. And once you do that, amen, you begin to learn more about them because you hear what they're saying, amen. You're listening to every word they're speaking. You're asking questions. Even when you open up the Bible and you read what God is saying to you, his words that he's speaking to you, amen. Hallelujah. There may be something you don't understand, but once you accept Christ and you're filled with the Holy Ghost, he'll make it clear to you because all you have to do is say, Lord, I don't understand what you're saying here. Can you show me? Can you explain to me what you're saying? And because you ask and you're seeking him, you're seeking to know more about what the word is saying, he will disclose it to you. Amen. 
Hallelujah. That's why it's so important that you always study and always follow his spirit, his leading, responding to his, how he wants to deal with us in faith. Amen. We can't give up on God. We have to trust him and hallelujah and have faith in what his word says. His promises are real and he does not lie. Amen. Hallelujah. We have to be able and to, to identify with his concerns and his purpose for our lives. Amen. He's concerned about us. Amen. There's some things that you may be going through. He's concerned about that because of his love for us. Amen. And then we also have to do all things to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For our, for the direction in our lives and to guide us and, on our conduct and te test our actions. Everything that we do should be glorifying God. Amen. When we think about doing something, we need to say, Lord, it's my action. What, how I'm going to respond, glorifying you. Amen. Hallelujah. We have to do that. Amen. We have to do everything in our workplace, in our homes, dealing with our money and our children. Amen. The food that we eat is a glorifying God. It's gluttony, greed. Hallelujah. When we divulge when you go to these all you can eat places, I see people's plate just overflowing and dropping on the floor and then making a mess at the table. And then they take two tables or tablespoons of food and then they put it aside and go get more. That's the spirit of gluttony. Amen. Hallelujah. But yet you're praying, Lord, heal my body. Amen. Hallelujah. But you're not doing anything to help yourself. God is a healer. Hallelujah. God will heal you, deliver you from diabetes. God will do it. Amen. Hallelujah. By Jesus stripes, we're already healed. Amen. But we have have to take action ourselves. Amen. Hallelujah. Also, I, uh, as I reflected on 2023, I need to be careful in this new year. I have to be more thoughtful in this new year. I have to be more thankful in this new year. Amen. I thank God for when he answers prayers. I thank God most mornings when I wake up in the morning, but I have to be mindful of the little things too, that we need to be mindful and thankful for. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have a job to go to today or tomorrow, we need to be thankful for that job. Even though you may not like that job until God moves you, you need to be thankful. You need to be thankful that when your child left out yesterday, he came back safely. Amen. That's a, a, that's something we need to be thankful for. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, calm me down. But we do our tax returns, amen, and we may owe the government $10. We need to be thankful that we're able to pay it. Even though you want a refund, we need to be thankful that we are able to pay our bills, amen, our debt, amen, to keep a roof over our head. We need to be thankful for that, that we're able to go to the faucet and turn on running water, amen, that when it's cold 20 below zero like it was a week or two ago, a week ago, we need to be thankful that we have heat in the house. Even though consuming energy is, is smiling uh, have a big smile. DTE has a big smile on their face because of, of profits that they're making. We're thankful that we have the heat and we're able to pay the bill. We need to stop complaining about everything. Amen. Hallelujah. That's my goal for 2024, not to complain about the small things and be thankful. Hallelujah. For the things that God is doing in our lives. Let's, as I said, it's a time of self-reflection, asking yourself a, a, a simple question. Am I living the word? Am I living the word? <clears throat> Am I living what this word of God says? Am I living what I've been taught? <coughs> Excuse me. Think about it. Are you living the word? Is your life an example for others to follow? Is your life an example of what it means to walk with God? Are you really satisfied with your walk before God in Christ today? Are you living 
your life well according to what the word of God says? I'm, those are questions you need to reflect on and ask yourself in this new year. And if any of your responses is no, you need to ask God what it is you need to, you need to work on and, and have God reveal you to you. We're so quick to see fault in everybody else, but ask God to reveal you to you. How do you walk with God and walk in union with him? It's, it's possible. It is possible to do. When you read the book of Genesis, when you read the word from Genesis to the book of Revelation, God created man for a purpose. God created man for the enjoyment of walking relationship, having a walking relationship that involved him in companionship, having conversation, dialogue with him, having intimacy with him, having, uh, making joint decisions with God, having delight, mutual delight, enjoying the same things that God enjoys. And most of all, sharing dominion on this earth. Even though Satan is here, the devil is here trying to kill, steal, and destroy, we still have dominion on this earth. Colossians 2 and 6 says, this is the Amplified Bible. Therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus, the Lord, listen to this. He said, walk in union with him, reflecting his character in the things you do and say, living lives that lead others away from sin. So what I said earlier is backed up by the word, scripture. That's why I tell you to get, get your Bibles. That's why I tell you to get the pen and paper. Because when God gives me something, he's given me the word to go along with it. What he has spoken to us, amen? reflecting his character. Why? Not just to please ourselves because look what I did. I'm walking with you, Christ, but to lead others to Christ. We are to lead others to Christ. We are to share the gospel with somebody. We need to lead someone through the steps of salvation. When we walk with God, we enter the dimension where God unfolds the secrets of his kingdom. Amen. And what do you mean by that? That means when we're, we're intimate with Christ, when we're intimate with him, that, that he will speak to us the things and, and allow us to have illumination of, of the things about him that others, that others may not know. I remember years ago, me and my husband were talking and I said something that God uh, had said <laughs> to me and he started laughing and you know what it, it showed him that God had a sense of humor. I can't remember exactly what it was, but God had a sense of humor. People don't realize that God has a sense of humor. Right. Amen? Amen. He was really shocked by that. But God revealed it to you. And because he revealed it to you, you can reveal it to someone else. You can share the secrets of the kingdom and they will receive it once they accept Christ. Amen. Through his word, amen, and your intimacy with him, he will share what's ahead of you his plans for you, the plans for us. May it be gradually, a little at a time, but he does it with patience and we have to be patient because a prophet may give you a word. The Lord told me to share this with you. It may not be for that moment in time and sometimes it is, but it could be for five, down, five years down the road, 10 years down the road. That's why when someone gives you a word, ask God, Lord, show me, make it clear to me, write it down in a journal. So when it comes to pass, you can go back. People have prophesied to me 
over the years. And I go back, I said, wow, that person told me this. God spoke that to me years ago. Even when I give someone a word, amen, they come back and it could be a year later. God did exactly what you said he would do, but I'm being used by God. It's not me. It's the Holy Spirit, God speaking through me. And he does the same thing with prophets and other people. Isaiah 45, 15 says this, truly you are a God who hides himself, O God and savior of Israel, a God who hides himself, God who hides himself. He hides his plans from, from us until it's time to reveal it. When it's the right time in the right way, he, he unfolds, he gives us the information for his glory and for joy, for our joy. Everything that God does is for his glory and for our joy. Amen. Are you getting this today? Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. They are plans for peace and not disaster. Plans to give you a future filled with hope. Amen. Our situations are not hopeless. We, there's hope in Christ. Amen. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of what? Peace and not evil to give you an expected end. Everything we receive, everything that we do is for God's glory and for us to have peace and joy and for us to have success in this earth so we can get to the prize. And that's to be with the Father, amen, in heaven. So how do we walk with God and walk in union with him? To walk in union means that we live by faith, knowing God is faithful to his promises. Faithful to his promises. Especially if we are obedient and we live the word, amen, hallelujah. We make mistakes, we fall down, but we get up, amen, and we repent. We don't have to stay down, we get up and we repent. When you look in the book of Genesis chapter 5, Enoch was the first man in the Bible who walked with God. <laughs> hallelujah. It says that he begot Methus, uh, Shalah. Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years and Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. Amen. So what does that mean? God took him. It means that when you look in Genesis, not Genesis, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 15, it said, by faith, Enoch was taken from his life so that he did not experience death. Amen. He did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. Amen. So he didn't experience death like we're going to experience death in this world. Amen. It's a, a physical death. Amen. But God took Enoch away. Amen. He didn't experience a physical death. E Enoch was the first man to uncover the true delight of walking with God. He found something even Adam and Eve didn't experience. He pressed into God until he learned how to commune with God through every facet of life. He was the first man to truly walk with God. So as a result, God did something ex extraordinary with him. And that was when he was taken from this earth and did not experience death. That's what God did for Enoch. By faith. So how do we... I'm, I, I'm picking up somebody's confused. In this earth, we're here temporarily. At some point, we're, we're all going to experience a physical death. Amen. When you sin, you experience both a spiritual death and a physical death. But when you accept Christ in your life, amen, your death is not a spiritual death. When you're walking right, talking right, living for Christ, amen, you experience a physical death. We leave, we're, our bodies are no longer here on earth, but, our, but we, our 
sitting at the right hand with the Father, amen? To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. With Enoch, he did not experience a physical death. He was just taken up to be with Christ, amen? Hallelujah, I hope that broke it down for you. And read that, study it in the Genesis. To, um, one day I'll get into more detail about that. So how do we walk with God and walk in union with him? By reflecting his character, not in some things, but in all things. In all things. In all things. As a Christian, as those who live for Christ, we are called to represent him through our actions, our thoughts, and our words so that others may see the, the kindness of love, amen, and grace that he has brought into our lives, amen. By representing God in all that we do, we can help others know him. And as followers of Christ and abiding by the word, then we reflect God's character. And when we reflect God's character, you all know that the fruit of the spirit is given to us as a gift is developed in us. Amen. Even though we receive it as a gift from God, it still has to be developed in us. In Galatians 5.22, it says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Self-control. A lot of us still need to work on self-control. Not just in how we respond to people, but in the way we spend our money, how we deal with different personalities. We can't change people. And we need to stop being critical of people's personalities but ask God to reveal to you and help you to deal with that person. Example, at one point when I belonged to a different church, there was an individual who was always started, uh, kept up confusion, complained about everything somebody did. That's not the way we did it. That's not the way we did it. You know, when God put me in a certain position, he showed me what to do and how to do it. But there was a person who was always negative, always making comments, always running to the pastor. She doing this, just constant. And that went on for a few years until I came to the realization God showed me. I said, Lord, help me to deal with the personality of that person. Help me to deal with her. her. And you know what? He showed me what to do. He told me, just include her in everything that you do. Make her a part of the program. Make her a part of what you're doing. And once I did that, the whole situation changed. Amen. It was smooth sailing with her from that t time on. I'm just t being honest with you. You may have the same situation in your workplace with family members. Ask God to reveal to you how to deal with that person's personality because that's who God and how God made them. God said he made us in his image. That person has the, is made in the image of God. So we have to learn how to deal with those individuals in, the, in their personalities. So, but notice the first thing that he mentioned as a fruit and that's love, amen? To reflect God's character, it clearly states in John 13, 35, John 13, 35 and amplified, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. And this is what it says. If you love one another, if you keep on showing love among yourselves. It's time. I love you. I love you. I love you. But your behavior the things that you do, the way you treat people, the things that you say, you're not showing love. Some of you walking around with daggers in your hands, stabbing people in the, in the back, gossiping about them. You find out something that they've done wrong, the mistake that they made, and you want to spread it and, and, and tear them down, but you're not perfect yourself. 
Is that showing love? When somebody's in need, love means that you show compassion for them. That you share the gospel with them. That you give them a word of encouragement. That you give them a, a card that, that's going to uplift them, that gives a scripture that's going to comfort them. Because sometimes they just need some love. Sometimes they just need to be comforted because they're going through some struggles. They need to know that God is real, that he loves and he spreads his love through us. So how do we achieve some of the resolutions, the vows, the desires in our lives? Especially, specifically, how do we walk with God and walk in union with him? As we begin 2023, for the church and for all Christians, it's time for you to fast and pray. We have to build ourselves up individually and corporately. We fast and pray because we need the flesh to be in complete surrender to the Holy Spirit. Our flesh is weak. We mess up. Understand that the motive in fasting should ultimately be to glorify God. Not to just have an emotional experience or attain personal happiness. You need a personal transformation to take place. You want to get closer to God to hear him more clearly Fasting and prayer can even bring about revival, a change in direction in your life. What is fasting? It's when you abstain from food or certain types of food for a period of time, or even from social media, television. Some of us uh, give up sweets, amen? Maybe you uh, give up TV programs so you can spend more time with God than what you're watching on TV. Spend the hours that we spend watching our favorite programs should be spent in the word of God. I'm guilty. I spend more time watching TV than I do sometime in the word of God. But 2023 is gonna be different. I study my word, I read my word. I pray, I seek the Lord, but I can do more. And that's what I'm praying about, seeking the Lord in fasting and praying so I can receive more of God to become more intimate with him because I know God has great things for me to do in his kingdom, the work that he has tapped me to do. When you read the Bible, Moses fasted. When you look at Deuteronomy chapter 9, 18 through 19, Deuteronomy chapter 9, 18 and through 19, the New Revised Standard Version, it says, Then I lay prostrate before the Lord as before, 40 days and 40 nights. I neither ate bread nor drank water because of all the sin you had committed, provoking the Lord by doing what was evil in his sight. For I was afraid that the anger that the Lord bore against you was so fierce that he would destroy you. But the Lord listened to me that time again also. So he was not just fasting and praying for himself, he was fasting and praying for the people, the Israelites who would have been disobedient. Our fasting and praying should not be selfish, amen? Our fasting and praying should be that to glorify, glorify God and to help others. It's, we, we, we have this, this, when you practice in a, a song before you say, me, 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 me. You know, that's, we, we so caught up in me, 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 help me, help me. But it's about others as well. Fasting and praying is not about just you, but for others. Amen. When you read the word, Jesus himself spent time in fasting and prayer during his life on earth. And he expected his followers to fast as well. You don't believe me? Go to Matthew 4, 21. It says, then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Amen. When we fast and pray, amen, we're going to be still led by the spirit. 
Amen. Because God wants to put something in us. He's teaching us something. He's showing us something. But after fasting, again, 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. I know he was hungry. Have you ever been in a situation when you missed a day of, of food or fasted for two days? You get, you be, you starve. Seem like everything you see is about food. And you know what we do? We get hangry. We hungry and we get mad. <laughs> we got to get delivered from that, y'all. It says, the tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. But what did Jesus say? He answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Hallelujah. So the fasting and praying will help us to live by everything out of the word of God, the mouth of God. And that's what the Bible says. Hallelujah. So that's my message. I'm going to stop right here because next week I'm going to take up why we fast and pray the benefits of it. Amen. This is a new year, 2023. Everything that I talked about, it's time for self-reflection. You want to know more about God and what he's said in his word, his promises. So you can start declaring those promises over your life that you're the head and not the tail you are above and not the beneath. Amen. He's given us what we need in the word. Everything that we need is in the word. Even concerning our giving, even concerning raising our children, even on how we deal with problems, even how to wear the whole armor of God and put on the armor of God, everything to be, victorious in this life. So that's my message today. If you don't know Christ, if you have not accepted him in your life, this day, don't let another day go by. Don't let January 2nd, 2023 go by without you accepting the Lord in your life. It's simple. Confess that you're a sinner. You don't have to clean yourself up. The Lord will do that for you, but confess out of your mouth that you're a sinner. And the word tells you that, he, that God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Confess with your mouth. Let them know that you believe that Jesus is the son of God, that he died on the cross for us. When he died, he was buried, but he rose on the third day for us. He paid the price for our sins. Ask the Lord to come into your heart to fill you with the Holy Spirit. He'll turn you from your wicked ways, amen? He'll give you what you need and guide you through this life, amen? And once you do that, hallelujah, he has forgiven you and you become a new creature. And just like I talked about earlier, all things are passed away. He forgets about your past. He'll forget about what you did in 2022, even from the time you were born. You become a new creature, amen? This is the time. This is the season to do it. This day, January 1st, 2023. And then find you a church to go to that's going to teach you what the word of God says or listen to this broadcast every week, the spoken word. I'm Pastor Sandra Carter. I come on every Sunday at 1030. Share this broadcast with your friends and family. Watch what God will do. Amen. Father God, we thank you, O oh God, for the word that has gone forth today. I thank you, O oh God, that if anyone has accepted you as Lord and Savior from this broadcast, we rejoice right now. Ask that you strengthen them, that you guide them, that you give them what they need, oh God. Encourage their heart, oh God. Hallelujah. Equip them to live victoriously in you. And Father God, we just thank you, oh God, for this word, this teachable word, this word that will help them make a change in them for, for them to self-reflect on what they need to change. And if you like to give, once again, Go on the dashboard. You can give the Givelify. Click on the link. Uh, it will take you directly to um, 
the the page Shield of Faith Ministries with Pastor Sandra Glover Carter is Giblify.com, or you can copy and paste it into the website, um, and it'll take you there. If you know me personally, you can send me a message, inbox me, and um, let me know. I'll give you my my uh, phone number, and you can give through Zelle. But with that said, God bless you. Have a wonderful day. I thank you for listening, and I look forward to you tuning in next week to the Spoken Word. God bless you.